Hello everyone, my name is Ian Robinson with Creative 111, and today I'm excited to be presenting on behalf of Boris FX to go over Sapphire FX. Now, personally, these are some of my most favorite effects, and I honestly try and use them in just about every project I touch. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started actually talking about the effects. We have a lot of different things to cover, so let's get started. First off, You'll notice in my project here, I have three compositions, a background comp, a text comp, and a finished comp. We're gonna go ahead and start with the 03 finished composition, and I'll press the space bar to show you a preview of the project we'll be building over the next two movies. Now, this is a rendered 3D piece of text that says gamma in kind of a logo style, and then the background is generated just on a black solid using one of the over 270 effects and over 3,000 presets that are available in Sapphire. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the space bar to stop playback so we can actually look at how these effects are layered into this finished project. If I select my black solid here and press E to reveal the effects, you can see I have this effect that's called S effect which is Sapphire Effect. Now, I'll get into what SFX are a little while later, but I just want you to know that they're there. Now, the way most people get started actually playing around with Sapphire Effects are by using the individual presets for an effect. So if I go ahead and select this layer five and press E, you notice I have a drop shadow that's applied that's just helping this kind of pop off the background there a little bit. You can see when I toggle it off and on. And if I select this next layer of rendered elements, I have what's called ultra glow. And if I move to a more colorful frame in the project and toggle that off and on, you can see it's applying a nice blue glow to some of the different highlight areas. Now, how that glow works and different ways that that interacts with the lighter and darker pixels will be determined by the effect, but more specifically, the preset that we'll start with. So let's actually look at how to generate a background. So I'm gonna to go to the 01 background composition and I'll select the background start layer because it has no effects. If I go to the effect controls, you can see I have no effects. Now, let's go to the right side of the After Effects interface to the Effects and Presets panel. If you don't see this panel, I want you to double click on the word standard here and reset your workspace to the standard workspace. Then you should see Effects and Presets. I simply typed S underscore in the search field and that'll bring up all of the different Sapphire effects. So first thing to note, all of the effects are organized into groups based on the kind of effect. So if I wanna make an adjustment to something, there's the adjust group. Everything is pretty straightforward. There's blur and sharpen, there's builder, which we'll get to. There's composite, distort, lighting, render, stylize, time, and transition effects. Now, for the background, I wanna actually render something. So I'm going to open up the render group here. And as you can see, I have a ton of different Sapphire effects that I could use to actually render something. Now just to kind of play with something a little dynamic, I'm gonna go here and double click on S Sparkles. Since I already had layer three selected, when I double clicked on the effect, it automatically applied the effect to the selected layer and loaded up the effect controls in the effect controls panel. Now, this may look straightforward like any other typical effect, where I can go in and make adjustments to each of the different parameters. For example, if I didn't want the density of these sparkles to be here, I could decrease that just by clicking and dragging on the individual parameter. But you notice right here, I'm not really getting much feedback in terms of what things are going to look like other than the final result. So what I wanna do is look at the presets and there are a ton of presets. So I'm gonna go up here and I'll choose load preset. When I load the preset, you'll notice it pops up in the Sapphire preset browser. And in here under S Sparkles, you can see there are a ton of presets that I could start with. So if I want something that has streaks in it, I could choose this behind preset. If I press the space bar or press the play button, you'll notice I get a preview of that preset. Now, 
Right here, I want you to notice in the preset browser, there is a drop down in the middle, kind of in the upper right section of the previews here. And if I click on that, I can preview on the source or I can preview on black. Now it just so happens I have a black layer solid. So that is going to look exactly the same. But I can also preview on a sample where it loads up a piece of sample footage. So if you were layering something on top of footage, like in a dream, I wanted to create a dream sequence. I could choose this in a dream one and now I get a preview as to what it would look like on footage. Now, in this instance, I don't necessarily need that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say preview on source, which happens to be black. Let's say I actually wanna choose this glittering embers. I think this kind of looks cool. Let's see how this animates. I'll go ahead and press play. And you'll notice here as it's playing, I get a general idea as to what this looks like. And this looks pretty good. So I wanna apply this. I can come down here to the lower right corner and choose load. So that's gonna load this preset into the effect here in my effect controls panel. Now, once you've applied a preset, that doesn't necessarily mean you can't go back and change your mind. So in this instance, I wanna choose a different sparkles preset. To do that, I'll go up to the load preset button in the top of the effect controls panel and just click on that. And that'll go ahead and open up the Sapphire preset browser again. So if I scroll down, I want to apply the strips of blue preset. So I'll just click on that and choose load. And you'll notice here, now I have a new preset. In the effect controls panel, I still only have one effect applied. This is just yet another preset. Now, to make adjustments to this preset, just like any other effect in After Effects, I can scrub on these parameters in the effect controls panel. And if I go to the left side of the effect controls panel, you'll notice I have these little arrows. So I'm gonna click the arrow next to size details. And you notice I have a whole bunch of different details that I can change in regards to the size. Now I could make those changes here in the effect controls panel, or I can make dynamic changes right here in the composition panel by hovering over any of these lines. So I'm gonna hover over the middle line first. And notice when I do that, if you look in the info panel in the upper right hand corner of After Effects, you'll see Sapphire size widget. Now, if I click and drag on this line, notice the size of these blue streaks are changing. And you can see in the effect controls panel, I'm making adjustments to the size diagonal one setting. Also, notice these lines are color coded. So if I go over the blue circle, notice it'll highlight yellow, letting me know that I'm about to make an adjustment there. And if I click and drag, notice now I'm making adjustments to the blue size of my preset. So I'll go ahead and make that nice and large. As you can see, we can make adjustments dynamically in the composition panel or in the effect controls panel. But I'm done with this effect because I kind of want to show you how we can mix and match effects, kind of like mixing paints on a paint palette. So I'll start by going up to the effect controls panel, highlighting the S sparkles effect, and just pressing delete to go ahead and delete that effect. I want to apply the S Luna effect. So I'll double click on that effect and you notice that adds a moon to my layer. Just like we did before, I'm going to choose a different preset by choosing load preset. Now I'll go to the full moon preset, click on that and choose load and that'll go ahead and load that preset. So you can see I've got a nice moon here in the middle of things, but it looks a little stagnant and boring. So I want to add a little bit more color and texture to it. If we look over here, I have sparkles color. I have S texture chroma spiral. Let's go ahead and apply that. I'll double click on that effect in the effects and presets panel, and that will go ahead and apply that effect. Now in the effect controls panel, if I scroll up and down, you can see first I have the S Luna effect applied. And then on top of that, I have the texture chroma spiral applied. Now I can't really see the previous effect, so I need to change how things are combined. So I'm gonna to go to the Combine dropdown and change it from texture only to screen. Okay, that looks pretty good, but let's see what overlay looks like. That's much better. I'm getting these interesting highlights, colorful highlights, over top of my moon. 
So as you can see, I've kind of blended things together and made some adjustments. Of course, I can make more adjustments to any of these other effects, but I kind of like how this is headed. So let's add a little bit more of an interesting glow to this. Now we'll go to the effects and presets panel and scroll up and let's add S Ultra Glow. So I'll just double click on that effect to add the glow. And once again, I wanna go up and choose Load Preset. Now, notice since I have preview on source here, it's showing me the end result of everything. So I can browse through these presets and see how things work. And don't worry, we're gonna have a video just on Ultra Glow a little while later. But for right now, I just wanna click through a couple of them so we can see some of the different effects that we could go ahead and apply. I actually really love this electric blue Ultra Glow, but let's click through and see if we can find some other ones. This full reset looks pretty cool. Yeah, I kind of like full reset. Or this Ultra Glow effect, which is called Magic Mist. That's kind of cool. Let's choose Magic Mist and choose Load. So as you can see, I've gone through and kind of mixed and matched different elements and blended them together to create this really kind of interesting glowing moon. So as you can see, once you've taken multiple effects and multiple presets, you can blend them together to create something a little bit more interesting in your scene. Now, the fun really begins when you get into S effects. Let's go ahead and delete everything that we've applied so far. So I'll just collapse all of those effects and highlight all of them and just press delete. And let's go to the S effect. There we go, S effect. And I'll double click to go ahead and load that. And it doesn't look like much has happened, but don't worry, we're gonna go ahead and load up a preset. And this is where the fun really begins with the presets because I'm back in the Sapphire preset browser, but unlike the presets for each individual effect, I now have groups of effects based on the kind of effect that I actually wanna create. So for example, if I was trying to create a background, I could double click on the background group. And when I open up the background group, you'll notice I have a ton of other background effects that are already set up and ready for me to use. So I can simply scroll through these different effects to see what they look like. And you may notice some of these effects are black. And that's just because it took a second to load, but if you notice here under a touch of, that isn't really much of an effect. But if I go to my preview options again, I can say preview on sample, and it'll go ahead and load up individual samples so I can see a little more clearly what it is that each of the effects does. So I'll just scroll down here and notice if I wanted a bokeh effect, I could simply click on that and press play and it'll go ahead and give me a preview of how that bokeh is actually gonna go ahead and look when I load it into my project. Now, I'll stop playback here because these groups were grouped according to, you know, whatever it was that I was looking for. If I just click on groups again, it's gonna take me back to the overarching groups of effects. So for example, if I just wanted to create some artistic effects on video, I could open that up and you can see all of these different elements that have been applied here. Now I'm gonna go back to groups here just by clicking on that because I can also go to builder effects. And in here are a bunch of layered effects that have already been pre-built that I could use to start with whatever my project is going to be. Let me go to my groups here and I'll search for gradient. Now in my groups, I have fruit slices, which believe it or not, this is what I use to actually create the animated snowflake background. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that into my project by selecting it and then going under load. When I do that, it'll go ahead and load that effect up here into my effect controls panel. And here under S effect, you notice that I have gradient multi that's been applied. As I mentioned before, there are a lot more powerful things that we can do using S effect and the builder, but we'll get to that in another video. For right now, I want you to just be comfortable with the idea of browsing the different effects and applying the presets and just understanding once you actually apply a preset, 
this is just a starting point. So for example, like with this preset, these colors aren't quite what I was looking for. So I could just come right here in the colors and I could choose more cool colors to actually better match the kind of snowflake theme that I was working on initially. Once you have a preset, it's just a baseline to start with. So I hope you've enjoyed this little intro to Sapphire FX and you're a little comfortable using the FX browser and loading up individual presets.